Hello and welcome to Momentum, the video series where we aim to keep you at the forefront of digital and marketing technology. Today, I'm joined by my colleague Dimo Stoichev, who is a digital account director at BDB. Welcome, Hi, everyone. So in this episode, we're going to be uh, discussing uh, a subject that I say, at least in B2B, we don't see uh, being used anywhere near as much as, as B2B for, um, as a comparison. And that is remarketing. Um, for anybody that's not familiar, Demo, do you want to give us a quick intro to what remarketing is? Yeah, I think everybody's um, at least heard of remarketing as a term. But from my experience, people in B2B don't really know um, in detail what it is and how to use it. So this is something we want to talk about. But in very simple principles, remarketing allows you to install some sort of tracking on your website. It's something we call a pixel and that captures information about the people who visit your website and then you can use that information to get in front of these people again from different social media networks um, for b2b that's commonly done via linkedin but there's also opportunities for paid search and marketing and also you can use other social met networks like facebook and twitter and so on I think for today we're going to focus on LinkedIn and paid search and see how you can use um, the marketing there. But we can also mention some other ideas. Yeah. So I think um, in case anybody's not come across it before, we'll all be really familiar with the B2C examples which we see every day, which is you go to a website, say Amazon for example, you look at a product, later on you're browsing the internet, you're on a new site and you'll see an advert for that product. It's trying to drive you back there. But like Demo says, we can apply that to the B2B world. We just have to think a little bit smarter with it. So can you say like, how you see it being used differently in B2B versus B2C? Is it as simple as just yeah. sending somebody back to a product is it, or is it a different approach? So with B2B, typically you wouldn't be advertising a product directly. It's more you have a service offering or you have a kind of a bigger value proposition that you want to get out to people so it's not a transactional relationship that you're building so that's where pre-marketing comes into place because it allows you to get in front of your audience multiple times which then allows you to build up on their awareness over time educate them about your offering and get them to a point of conversion so it i think it's not as straightforward as it is for b2c and then we have the added challenge of making sure that your audience is relevant. So if you think about using Facebook as part of your marketing mix, you don't have the targeting options to make sure you only get in front of um, B2B audiences. Same with Google, where if you want to get in front of B2B audiences, you're very limited with what keywords you can use. And that's something that their marketing can help us solve because if you just remarket people who visited your website in the past, that already filters a big percentage of that audience and makes sure that, first of all, they're aware, and second of all, they're far more likely to be in the B2B um, market. Mm -hmm. And it just makes it, it just makes sure that whatever you're um, investing, it, it helps to get in front of relevant people and your budget is not being wasted. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we can talk about some more practical examples. Like for example, we can start with LinkedIn and see how you can use their marketing for LinkedIn specifically. Mm -hmm. So I think that's an interesting point. Um, I, I, want, I just want to drill down on one of the things there, I suppose, which is that it, it ties back to the fact that the B2B buying journey is longer. And yeah. somebody's not likely to make a snap decision to buy from you there and then. Obviously, those things do happen. Somebody might find your website, might be in market, might be a quick decision maker and might you know get in touch you know even the same day to find out more information. But a lot of the time these days we see in the B2B uh, buying journey, the people are more often researching themselves and going out there consuming multiple pieces of content from lots of different sources, independent sources, as well as, as, as potential um, solution providers to them. So we have a long journey in a lot of cases where people can go out there and look at different pieces of content and do, and, th and therefore it opens up this opportunity to be nurtured, as you say, based on yeah. the fact they've been on your website. I think uh, what we notice on average is that um, the transaction from B2B takes three to six months, maybe even longer in some cases. And that's a very long time where 
if you only preach people at their awareness stage and you only preach them once, it's very difficult to actually uh, support them throughout the whole buying cycle. You might be doing really well at one stage, but then your nurturing is just very limited. And at the critical stage, which is the conversion, that's where you can't really do much outside of relying that they've seen some of your content, but you don't really know for sure that they've seen it. And that's um, an issue which I think mar uh, pre-marketing clearly helps us to address. And I think thinking about it as being this multi-month um, campaign approach really allows you to break things into different stages. And I mentioned conversion and awareness, but you also have an education phase and um, you also have this decision phase, which is the critical point that you want um, to get to and put the right content in front of these people. Mm -hmm. So when we think about, so obviously you've, you've talked about two that we want to focus on today, which are primarily LinkedIn and Google Ads as, as both three marketing options. I'd say if I had to guess, I'd assume people are more likely to be familiar with Google Ads as a, as a channel for remarketing. I'd say doing social remarketing, something that people aren't as familiar with or maybe isn't quite as commonly used uh, or as widely used yet, while obviously think, it has been around for a while. Do you think that's correct? Yeah, and I think it's also worth mentioning that LinkedIn had very limited remarketing capabilities, but I think since 2019, they started introducing new features and new ways to build up your pre-marketing audiences. So what I said in the beginning, that it's based on the website visits, LinkedIn actually addressed that by introducing some new features. So now you can remarket based on um, video views or the percentage of a video that your audience watched. And that could be 25%, 50%, 75% for the whole video. So as previous, well, traditional remarketing, we might say is based on somebody visiting your site or a certain page on your site. Yeah, which is still possible. So <laughs> Then LinkedIn has now also enabled you to retarget people based on seeing a video on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Is that based on video ads? Can it be organic uh, video views? Or is, is it just the ad side of things? So um, it's based on video ads, but it's possible to do it if you sponsor an organic post. Mm -hmm. So if you have a video post and you put some budget behind it, then you can also capture an audience based on people who watched a certain percentage yeah. of the video. So we can say, yes, yeah, some, somebody's seen 50% of our video, we can show them another ad. How do you see people using that? And have you, have you seen any success with that so far with campaigns? Yeah, so that's something we started doing, especially in the awareness phase of a campaign, because if you think about it, it uh, removes an obstacle where you don't need your audience to necessarily have an engagement. All they have to do is watch at least 25% of the video and you already add them to a remarketing audience. But if you think about the traditional approach, they have to click on your ad and only then you can remarket to them. So that immediately removes mm -hmm. an obstacle and you can think of it as two ways. First, obviously they've seen your content so you know that they're at least somewhat familiar with your offering and you can start building up on that. And the other is that you know that they're actively using the platform mm -hmm. and that's key because when it comes to planning your next stage and you want to use that audience, you know that a large percentage of the people in that audience are actively using the platform. And it's really helpful because in a kind of a classic way of estimating the performance, you would assume that 50% of your audience will be using LinkedIn in that period, mm -hmm. the period of your campaign. While when you have remarketing, that's much closer to 70-80%. So yeah. you, get, you know that more of these people um, that are available to you to get in front of. So I guess going back to your point there about, um, I guess, the traditional approach to, to remarketing where we'd be looking at a page view uh, based on a tracking pixel. Mm -hmm. I guess one of the, uh, the key things that's missing, as you say, is that if I've, I've seen an ad but not clicked, We've got no way of engaging that person again, even though they might well have remembered your brand name and even liked the message that they've seen, they just might not have engaged at that time. Whereby, by doing it based on a video view, we have the option to effectively run a series of ads, mm. which mean that we're only hitting people that have seen a, seen a previous ad. Yeah, and it also, because 
as an agency, obviously, we do awareness campaigns. And when it comes to demonstrating ROI of an awareness campaign, it's very difficult because you can show how many impressions you got, but those impressions are a bit meaningless because you don't really have anything of value to show for the campaign in the end. Um, but if you take the remarketing approach and let's say that you have a video ad, at the end of the campaign, you end up with an audience of people who've seen a certain percentage of that video that you can get in front of again and start building up on top of that. So then you can actually demonstrate an ROI and you can show that your campaign generated this audience. And then when you start using this audience throughout other campaigns, you can start building up your ROI and show the return on that investment from your initial campaign. And that's something really powerful because it actually puts awareness campaigns on the map. Mm -hmm. Like they start making sense. Yeah. And that makes sense. I think in the past we've often had a, a challenge in terms of how, how do we plan a campaign that's multi-phased and helps build awareness and can lead to a conversion while making sure that the people have actually seen the advert. We're not just see, showing one set of audience an awareness ad and then a completely separate set of, of audience members a conversion ad later on. So this is actually enabling us to say we know this person is engaged and now we're giving them the, the follow-up to that. So going back to the subject, I suppose, of of Google Ads. For many, anybody that's not familiar, Google Ads is is very much down that more traditional route of, of remarketing, which is that it's it's all pixel and page view based, and you can target based on a specific page view, but that you can't do video views effectively with it because yeah, you know, it doesn't involve viewing videos. I mean, um, technically, YouTube is part of Google. But <laughs> we'll come back to that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I suppose the the question I want to ask is. What do you see as the difference between remarketing on Google Ads versus remarketing on LinkedIn? Why, why use one over another? Yeah, so um, that really has to do with why would you use each platform as well. So with LinkedIn, you have all of your targeting options, but you can't really make sure that you get in front of the people you target at the right time. So you don't really have any context as to when you get in front of them which is what Google solves by giving you access to the keywords they're searching for, which allows you to get in front of people as they're searching for something relevant to the content you want to get in front of them. And that makes a massive difference because having that context means you can get in front of them when they're more likely to make a decision. Mm -hmm. So you effectively filter down that remarketing audience to, to basically say, target people that match my remarketing audience while this other condition is true, such as a, the yeah. page content matches the subject matter. I suppose the only thing we need to bear in mind for that is having a large enough audience size that you can actually reach that. Yeah, so um, I guess we can mention this for LinkedIn as well, but the minimum audience size you need for LinkedIn is 300 members, part of your audience, and then you can run the marketing on LinkedIn and use that audience. For Google, that number is a bit larger, so if you want to do paid search remarketing on Google, you need at least a thousand members. Mm -hmm. And that only comes from page visits. So it takes longer to build that audience. But what you get in exchange is the ability to get in front of these people when they're actively searching for information. So for planning your campaign, you can do your awareness using LinkedIn and then follow up with the next phase of your campaign by using paid search. And I think that really starts to naturally help you to progress people to a journey. I mean, obviously, you have to think about the right content to get in front of them. But it really starts making it a lot easier to approach these people with something that you know is going to help them and is going to help educate them and mm -hmm. get them to a point where they're ready to make a decision. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, it's possibly worth just clarifying as well, because what I think it's easy for us to say Google Ads, but Google Ads covers a lot of different things. So within Google Ads, correct me if I'm, I'm missing anything, Demo, but I'd say we have display um, as part of the Google Ad Network. So when you see different banner ads, APUs, skyscrapers across the internet, a lot of the time, not all the time, but a lot of the time you are yeah. actually seeing uh, ads as part of the Google Ad Network as display. There's okay. YouTube advertising, so we've got adverts on on YouTube, which you'll see all the time before yeah. videos, unless you're on a premium account. And then there's obviously the 
well-known uh, paid search, which is obviously the ads that you get mm. um, above any Google search result. Yeah, and I think display ads, uh, that's something that everybody should be familiar with, but it's really impossible to use that for B2B because you get in front of so many people and on so many different websites and mm. tabs which are not really relevant to what they're trying to present to these people. Does that apply, in your opinion, with retargeting as well, or does retargeting circumvent that problem? So I think with remarketing, you can get in front of uh, the people you want to, but you still have very limited control as to what context you get in front of them. Mm -hmm. So I see it as something that might be worth trying, but um, by not having the context, I think you're better off putting your mm -hmm. budget on LinkedIn or other social platforms. So I think the way I've always thought about this, at least for me personally, I don't know if it applies to everybody else, is when, um, let's say, um, a, a piece of software is trying to retarget to me, if, if I see a display advert and I'm currently on a news site reading a news article, I'm not really interested in that advert that's yeah. alongside. I think they typically have quite a low click through it. Obviously, you pay cost per click, so that's not really the end of the world. But I'm focused on that news content that I'm currently reading. Whereas if I've gone to LinkedIn, I'm generally looking to, to consume content if I'm just looking at my stream. Therefore, I don't know what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for something specific. And the ad comes up that's uh, kind of relevant while I'm at a time to just kind of browse and find random little mm -hmm. tidbits effectively. So I'm more likely to engage than I would with a Google display ad effectively. Yeah, I think there's an option that's missing which can make display really work which is if you can select what type of industries you want to get in front of or just have some sort of targeting to help you narrow down mm. the list of websites. But I guess the, re the, the problem with that is obviously for LinkedIn, everybody that registers on LinkedIn effectively puts their CV into LinkedIn yeah. if you bother to fill out your profile. Whereas Google, it's just based on, in many cases, just what they can gleam about you based on what you do while you're using it, what the sites yeah. you go to. Not to say Google doesn't have a huge amount of data, but a lot of that's not as selectable as an advertiser as it is with platforms such as LinkedIn. Yeah, so I think the bottom line is that it's something that might be worth doing and experiment with, but they wouldn't prioritize it over what Google can really do for us. And that's the contextual type of advertising which you get with paid search and YouTube, which we can also talk about. So I think that's a, a good pivot point since you just mentioned <laughs> it. I don't really know a lot about YouTube um, in terms of advertising. So in the context of remarketing, what can YouTube offer? So it's very similar because it works on the same principle. You get in front of people as they're searching for content that's part of the keywords you're targeting. So in that sense, it's very similar to paid search, but you have that added, um, I guess, another feature, which is the type of videos you're watching, because your videos are obviously tagged with certain things. There's, um, it, it's part of a playlist on certain things, and all of that helps you to, um, ad again, contextualize what people, what type of content are people consuming. Mm -hmm. And then you can put ads in front of them which in this instance, again, you know that they've been to your website before, you know that they're actively engaged and looking for this content. So your ad is a lot more meaningful to them mm -hmm. as opposed to just seeing a call that when they watch yeah. some irrelevant video. Um, and there's quite a lot that you can do on YouTube, which I had opened, but they seem to have lost now. <laughs> That's all right. So I can fill in the meantime. So I'll, I'll ask you a question then, which is yep. obviously remarketing is possible through YouTube. That's good to hear. Can, do you know if we can remarket it based on, on video views in the same fashion to, to LinkedIn? Um, I don't think you can do it based on the percentage, but you can definitely do it based on the video views. And it's not just um, your ad views but it's also organic views. So, so if I have my own YouTube channel, I can say, if you've watched my videos in the past, I'd like you to, to see this video that I'm putting up exactly, as yeah. a video ad. Yeah, which um, I guess it's a good argument as to why you need a company YouTube channel because you can create these audiences and you can also use your videos to pre-market to your audiences and it just really extends um, the reach of your content mm -hmm. and makes it more relevant. Because if you just take YouTube as a platform that you use without really having these targeting options, in B2B that's very difficult. Like how many good B2B YouTube channels can you think of? Yeah, not, not too many. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
So I think that's that's really interesting. And I think the great thing about the likes of YouTube, obviously it's possible through other channels as well, but I just say the thing about video adverts is you have the capability to make them really engaging. Obviously, with any ad of any sort, you have to do it well, otherwise yeah. it's not going to be engaged with. But you can tell a story and you can make something engaging or even entertaining or just interesting through video. It's a lot harder to do, I'd say, through through just a still image, for example, which obviously uh, coupled with remarketing is something that's quite powerful because you can really start to build that journey as we talked about mm. and understanding you know, where somebody is in the journey. And, and yeah. I think if you look at the journey, you have awareness and education and you can't really provide much of either with just a single image, to your point. And that's why video is really helpful to be able to be that medium that allows you to provide more information and um, really start telling the story. But then when it comes to decision, um, video is just, it takes too long to get people to take a decision. I think that's where single images, mm -hmm. um, carousels and just the mediums that's more short and to the point mm -hmm. is more helpful. But then again, you just need to offer something of value in exchange. Yeah. So I think when we were talking about this previously, we mentioned the idea of you might have a LinkedIn um, camp, uh, ad campaign that has a video at the awareness stage. Yeah. Then when it comes to the, um, the follow-up effectively where you're looking for somebody to take action, that's where you might follow up with lead gen and having even a, a lead gen form which somebody can, can take that quick action. that's another thing them. we can talk about, the lead gen forms. So LinkedIn also offers you to have legion forms as part of your ads, which essentially means that you don't send people to a landing page, but they click on your ad and a form pops up and it's already pre-populated with um, that user LinkedIn information, LinkedIn profile information. And you can actually use that for your pre-marketing as well. So you can remarket to people who submit the form, but also those who open the form, but don't submit it. So you can start building an audience of people who um, nearly performed an action. <laughs> nearly performed an action, yeah. Okay. But um, those people would be very likely to convert because they took a step, but something put them off. Mm. And what do you know off the top of your head when, when we say somebody started to submit a form? Does that mean somebody that clicked to open the form or, or somebody that started actually typing responses into the so form? So that's just click to open the mm. form. You can't actually see whether they started filling in sure. details. Okay. But if you know that their profile is pre-populated, basically all they had to do was press a button and for whatever reason they didn't. So that's something you can go back to them, for example, mm -hmm. um, put that content again, but maybe not gated or try different content or different forms, different call to action. Like you can start experimenting to see what actually helps to drive that conversion. Yeah. And then I think for me, that I, I, I don't know if you've got more points you want to make, Dima, but I think one of the points I'd love to, to mention in this is actually with regards to the likes of Facebook and Twitter, because I think it's easy for us to often think uh, in general for the type of campaigns that happen with B2B that they aren't um, the ideal platforms, because realistically, they don't often have very good targeting options, particularly Facebook. Twitter has got some, some quite useful target options, depending on the nature of the campaign. But particularly Facebook's got quite poor B2B targeting options, which means it's really hard to get in front of the right audience. Yeah. I think remarketing through those platforms is a way to make them useful. And I'd say one of the big things there that make them useful is cost per click. Would you agree with that? And do you want to delve into that? Yeah, and that's also valid for paid search because your cost per click is going to be much lower than what you usually see on LinkedIn. Um, but for Facebook and Twitter, it's just a massive difference because the cost of reaching somebody on Facebook is like less than half of what it is on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. maybe even lower. I'm going to give some really anecdotal yeah. numbers off the top of my head, which I'd say I feel like for, for what I see on a LinkedIn campaign cost per click, it's often uh, five pounds, euros around that. It sometimes, depends on the region, yeah. yeah. Sometimes I think North America, we often see much higher. I think yeah. I'll put that one in dollars, which is you know in the region of $10 for a single click. And I think when we, we start looking at what a Facebook click costs or a Twitter click costs, mm. I've often seen them, you know, one to two dollars, pounds, euros, whatever it is, all, the numbers are all close enough and to yeah. make sense uh, per click, which for me means that, you know, if we wanted to remarket it, there, that's where we can maybe start bringing in some of those more B2C platforms. Obviously, 
people might not be in the B2C mindset, sorry, the B2B mindset when they're on those platforms, but it doesn't change the fact that that person could still be your B2B buyer and you, we're still able to get front of yeah. them by using remarketing. Yeah, that's a good point. I think you need to think about the context. Like if you're the person but you're on Facebook and you want them to convert to a lead, I think that's unlikely. But if you approach them there with some educational content, I think they're far more likely to engage. I think you have to still be mindful of the platform and what people do on the platform. I think Twitter is pretty good for sharing news. Mm -hmm. So if you want to approach them with like a blog article on there that you want them to read, Twitter is probably the best platform for that, just because pe people go there explicitly to see news. I'd say that for me it applies to to some extent for all social media in general. Obviously, they've got yeah. different purposes, but when we go to social media, we're usually just looking to consume content, and we've not gone there with a with a set vision in mind. Like if you go to a news site, you might be looking to know I need to know the the business news for today, or I need to know the UK or European news for today, whatever right. it might be. When you go on social media, you don't know what you're going to find until you get there. So yeah. you're looking to just fill your time or find out random information. <laughs> and that's where I think that it actually brings relevance for any ad. The important thing is you're getting in front of the right people, which again, remarketing helps you do. Yeah, I think that's the main thing because uh, Facebook and Twitter, it's very, very easy to dismiss them when it comes back to your B2B marketing mix. Um, but using remarketing actually allows them to add some value and you know that you get in front of the right people. If you think about what's the right content to put in front of them, then you just, uh, it really helps you to support the journey and make sure that they have meaningful interactions with your brand. Mm -hmm. And that's all you can ask from social media really, it's just creating that meaningful experience and interaction for your audience. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've been going for a little while now. Is there any clothing thoughts that you want to bring to this, Dima? Any key points that you think people need to bear in mind? Um, yeah, so I think we mentioned content. I think one of the main things to keep in mind is that you can't get in front of people with the same content. Like remarketing doesn't mean um, just reaching the same people over and over again. You have to think of it as a journey. So think about the different phases and um, what helps you to move people from one phase to another and then make sure that you have that content available and that it's interesting and engaging for them. Because just because it's remarketing doesn't mean that you don't need any content. It actually relies heavily on your content being good and adding something meaningful to your audience. Yeah, excellent point. Okay, well, thank you for watching this video. We hope you found it insightful and you'll consider remarketing for some of your future campaigns. If you'd like to uh, keep up to date with future momentum content, feel free to like and subscribe this video below. And to reach out to either myself or Demo, I'll include our LinkedIn uh, profile details in the uh, video description. Thank you very much and Thanks see you in the future. See you in the future videos.